Hi everyone and welcome to the Action RPG series. Now we are restarting the series because unfortunately the original project from the start of the other series uh, was got, got broken. I couldn't open it for some reason. Okay, so something really bad happened there. So we're restarting the series and uh, with a bit of a clean slate. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to go through the process of our character's movement again, uh, but making the character rooted. And for this, we're going to carry on from the top-down template, rather than using anything like the third-person template, as it saves a lot of legwork. We can just go straight into it. We'll explain what each thing does in the top-down character and controller, but we're going to go from there and add our rooted motion to it. So, let's get started. So yeah, welcome back to this uh, redo of the Action RPG series um so we're actually starting off with the top down uh template so if you haven't got the top down template you can always add it to your content by just going into add feature content pack and choosing the top down content and that will save us a lot of hassle and most of what we covered really in the first couple of videos that we did last time so in the top down content i just want to explain what you see here and how it works so uh the character has nothing really on them Okay, it's just nothing really going on here. The controller is what's doing all the work, much like how we started off last time, if you watched that one. So, first of all, we've got on Begin Play, adding the input mapping. So, pretty standard stuff. If you want to add the input mapping, we'll go through inputs when we add more inputs later on, but that is adding the mapping context. we then got the click event. Now, the click event is happening on a few things. We've got uh, triggered, started, cancelled, and completed. So when it's triggered, this is constantly firing. And what this function here, get location under cursor, is doing is it's just returning the location under the cursor, essentially, and just getting the result and outputting the result here. And if it's true, we're going to cache its destination and send it to follow. And that follow here is simply just getting the actor uh, controlled, uh, sorry, get controlled pawn, getting the actor's location of the controlled pawn, and telling it to move in the direction from where I'm clicking and where it currently is okay and it's going to go and follow the mouse essentially the started is telling it to stop movement so if we were to click again uh it will stop whatever current movement it is currently doing and on cancels and completed both of these are going to trigger this check here to determine whether or not we should be uh moving to a target and here we're using a lap seconds as a pressed threshold so this press threshold is set to 0.5 so if I were to click the mouse and hold it for less time, less than 0.5, it's going to trigger this move to, which is a simple move to for our uh, AI to move the character to the location. And so it looks something like this. If I can click and drag, the character's going to move. And if I click once, it's going to spawn the little Nigra effect as well as move our character to the location. Okay. So... That is basic movement, okay? But obviously, we're going to make this a little bit nicer and use uh, abilities and other things. The left click in this is sort of Diablo like games is quite versatile and is used for lots of different things. It's what we call a context sensitive button. So, for example, if I'm clicking on the floor, they're going to follow wherever I'm clicking on the floor. Um, if I click on the enemy, they're going to go over and attack the enemy. If I click on a character, they're going to go over and talk to the character. I click on the chest, they're going to go over and open the chest, and so on and so forth. So we're going to make this left click a little bit more responsive. But one thing we have, haven't got in here that we will need is rooting the character. So in Diablo games, we want to hold down shift and lock the character to that location. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go into our input settings. Let's go over to our input actions and we're going to create a new input action. Uh, we'll go to input action and we'll do IA and we'll do um, rooted. Call it. And we'll go back to the context and add the mapping for rooted. Okay. And as you can see, these ones are set up with the left mouse button, like so. And touch, if you want touch screen controls, you've got that there too. But rooted here, we're going to use the left shift button. And save that, and close that. And what we're going to do is quite a simple thing, really. We're just going to tell our character to have no speed whilst they're rooted. 
Okay, so we're going to go into our top down controller. And actually, we'll do it on our pawn. We'll do it on our pawn. And then on our pawn here, we're going to do rooted. IA rooted. And when this is started, we're going to take our character movement component and set the movement mode to none on started. On completed and cancelled, we're going to have set the movement mode to walking. It's going to go to completed and cancelled. So compile and save that. Go back to the map. So if I hold down shift now, which I'm doing right this second, click, and it will no longer move. But we still want him to look at where we're going. At the moment, that ain't happening. And so let go of shift. So let's take a look at how that works. We're on the character, go to the character movement and scroll down to rotation. We can see here is orientated to his movement, which, okay, fine, but we're not moving. So how can we make him rotate instead? Well, what we can actually do is actually set his rotation manually. So what we're going to do is when this has been triggered and it's triggering, we are going to just tell him to rotate towards the cursor. Okay, rotate to where we want to go. So to do that, I need to get the hit result under the cursor. Well, we've got that function, but it belongs to our top-down controller. So how do we get this? Well, if we go ahead into begin play on our character, we can get the player controller and cast to our top-down controller. And we'll promote that to a variable, like so. So now we've got that saved, we can drag that out from our variable list. And we can now do get hit result. Uh, no, get, what is it, under, location under, what is it? Location, no, what do I call it? Get location under cursor. Ah, oh, it's not coming up. Um, is that because it's made private yeah, it's protected so you see over here it's protected that means i can't access this but i should be able to access their cached like docket destination instead so if i go in here and get a cached destination and i want my character to rotate towards that cache destination so i'm going to create a function in here and i'm going to do look at destination and in here we are going to do r interp2. I'm going to do set actor rotation. Plug that into my look at destination. And the rotation is going to go in from our r interp2. So the r interp2 will take a current value and move it towards a target value. So the current value will be the current actor's rotation. So get actor rotation log that into current the target is going to be using this cache destination so the destination here i'm going to make that an input on here or actually what would be better i could just take this from here and just put this in here instead there we go it's a bit nicer a bit cleaner and so we've got a destination which is an actual location uh we want to get our location so get actor location and we want to find the look at rotation. Look at rotation. The start point would be the actor's location. The target would be the cache destination. And the tangent of this is going to be there. Okay. However, we don't want it to do the full rotation. We only want it to do the yaw. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this. And we're going to split our look at rotation the target we're going to drag out and do make rotator and we're just going to put in the yaw leave zero uh, in roll and pitch delta time I'm going to do delta world seconds and intercept speed we'll do as three compile that go back to the event graph and on triggered for the rooted we're going to drag in our look at destination okay now, one thing that's key about this is that what if we aren't, aren't hitting the button, okay? 
Well, the cache destination will just look at whatever one was last clicked on. Okay. So if I were to go into the game now and move this way, hold down shift, they're going to look over here. But if I were to click and drag, you can see that cache destination is getting updated. Okay. And if I were to let go of shift, it's going to come towards me. Push it down. They're now rooted in the spot for our movement. Okay. And there you go. We've got simple rooted movement in our game. And there you go. So we can knot our movement down. And in the next episode, we're going to work on our interactions. So the left click is kind of a context sensitive button. We can click on various things to do various different jobs. So like click on the floor, we like to just move. But if we click on an object, we'll move that object and then interact with it. So we can go through that process of setting up the interaction system in the next episode. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early before everyone else. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.